Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and today we are talking about the new siege machines, specifically the ground one that houses your clan castle troops, the wall wrecker, and how you want to use it at Town Hall 10, which it might be, uh, it might have the biggest influence at Town Hall 10, just because um, a level 3 is very powerful compared to the Town Hall 10 level defenses. So we're going to take a look at some replays in this video and go through some tips on how exactly you want to use it because it's very effective when used correctly, but it can have pretty much no impact if you use it the wrong way. Um, so we'll cover all of that and more in this video. Starting off first with an attack before we get into too many details. And you can see it was positioned so it opened up two layers of walls before the troops take the jump spells towards the infernos. And what this does is it takes a base that previously might not have been able to be hit by a witch boulder. The, the two jumps might not have been able to connect everything. And it opens up enough walls to make it all doable. So this is going to be a very popular thing uh, to include in your kill squad to substitute in for wall breakers and possibly even jump spells to get very deep into the base and also to tank at the same time and deliver some full health CC troops into the base. So it does a quite a bit of jobs that otherwise would cost troop space and spell space to do. Um, it's going to first tank, which is very important for a kill squad. These are very high HP things. Second, it's going to funnel whatever is inside of it into the base. Because the pathing is so predictable, it goes straight for the town hall until it either explodes um, or until you deploy the troops from it. So you can predict exactly where the things inside of it will go. Don't have to worry about funneling bowlers as much potentially. And then finally, it's going to open up the walls for anything else going in, such as your heroes, um, which would otherwise take wall breakers, possibly jump spells. So we're going to go through all the details in this video, like I said, and I think it's going to be even more popular, the wall wrecker will, than the battle blimp, which is the air version of the siege machine, because the wall wrecker, like I said, does so many jobs, not to say the air blimp isn't going to be uh, used, but I think it won't be used as much because there's a lot of value to be gotten from the wall wrecker. So let's take a look at a few basic points, then we'll get back into some more replays here. Uh, the first thing is you want to substitute it for wall breakers, and you want to position it so it opens up the walls you want opened up. Like I said, it targets the town hall, so if you're coming in at the opposite side at the, of the town hall, you can pretty much drop it and it'll go straight forward into the base. But it's a little trickier if the town hall is maybe on like a side adjacent to your entry point, then you want to slide it over so it intersects the walls on its way to the town hall. Um, you want to fill it with DPS troops, those are bowlers, valks. Filling it with giants or like a golem isn't as effective because oftentimes um, it's a little bit slow. It targets um, walls in a weird way because it has that AI that goes straight for the town hall. So it's not going to necessarily tank that well for your troops once it's inside the base. It'll tank well initially, but um, it might not be the best tank later on. So you don't want to put giants inside of it because the troops behind it might die before the giants even come out. So it's better off just to deliver some bowlers and valks, which would be very difficult in some circumstances to funnel into the base anyway. So you can get some great value um, funnel-wise of getting those DPS troops in the base. Like I said, use it as a tank. That's the third point. Don't bring the giants or the golem or whatever. If you already have it, just use its tanking ability. Otherwise, you're almost wasting that and you might as well drop your CC troops like normal. Uh, take advantage of how high in hit points they are, especially at level 3. Um, which most people can uh, have a level 3 because of the clan perks. You get the donation uh, level buff. So if you have like a level 8 or 10 clan or above, you can get a level 3 one donated to you, even if a Town Hall 12 just unlocked it and only has level 1. And finally, deploy it early if you need to. Sometimes you might have to uh, get that damage out there right away. The rage might be down. You might want the bowlers to come out. You might want Valks to come out and take out like the queen or something. Don't wait if you don't want it to tank any longer. Hit the deploy button. It's like using the ability on your heroes and the troops will pop out and you can get that value right away. So don't be afraid to do that. We'll actually take a look in a moment at an attack where that might have been a good idea to do. So let's hop back into the next attack I want to show you guys. Um, this one is same attacker, pillage me timber, and 
once again, a nice attack. This is the Falcon strategy, which might be a little less popular post-update. The healers don't heal the uh, Valks and the Boulders quite as well. They don't heal, heal any troops quite as much as they used to. But I think it still will be popular, especially against bases where it's um, not explicitly defended against, like this one, not the best anti-Falcon base. So you can see the town hall is right at the bottom. The entry point is going to be at about 10 o'clock on this base by the air defense and the cannon, um, which, you know, because it's sticking out, could otherwise be a little bit of a tricky funnel point. But this just ensures that the Valks are going to go inside the base. Now, the only bowlers he brought are the ones inside the CC, which are inside that wall wrecker right now. And keep in mind, the bowlers are one of the main uh, powerhouses of the Falcon attack. So you can see coming in here, taking out these walls, just pushing along, you can basically two shot these walls, which is very nice. And the Valks are behind it. Now I might have considered deploying it a little earlier just because the Valks are already being targeted. Might as well get that damage behind them. When it stops tanking, it's typically a good time to deploy your troops. And in these Falcon attacks, because the Valks are so quick and they run ahead so much, sometimes there's not much of a point leaving them in. So right here, it finally goes down. And I think for some reason, a balloon was in there, but the bowlers come out, don't get a lot of value. Now he did dodge a couple giant bombs because they remained inside the machine. But I just feel like if you, um, if you're using the Falcon attack, it's good to use the uh, battle machine or the, uh, the wall wrecker to tank initially, but it's once the uh, the Valks are already out in front, you might as well deploy those bowlers and get the damage there. So keep that in mind. You don't always want to wait the entire duration of the uh, the, the lifespan of the hit points um, of that. Uh, what's it called? Wall wrecker. Have to get the names down. We have the siege machines, and within them we have the wall wrecker or the Battle Blimp, or the two names for the two Siege Machines. So anyway, like I said, just focusing on the uh, Wall Wrecker in this video, I'll make a video later focusing on the Battle Blimp once we see some more action of it. I think one possible use of it is you can use it like a Lava Hound in that you send it through the base towards the Town Hall, then you have a bunch of balloons in it, so you just hit Deploy whenever you want, maybe run right on top of like an Air Defense or an Inferno Tower. Lots of creative uses for it because it can go through a base so quickly since it's in the air, it doesn't have to worry about walls. You could even put ground troops in it and deliver like Valks right into the middle of the base possibly. Something to think about. Um, I actually just had that idea right here as I was recording, didn't even think about that beforehand. Maybe a possible use, we'll see. Maybe I should edit that out of the video if that's something that could be like useful. Um, I don't know. We're not going to be using it in CWL this weekend, uh, so it won't matter anyway. All right, one attack from the other side here. This is uh, Nike HD from Serbian Warlords. And this one was actually a La Luna attack, but it had a ground-based kill squad. So the wall wrecker was uh, used very nicely. Sending it in at that angle so it targets the town hall as it goes through the walls he wants to open up. You got to send it in at the right angle. And if you're on the same side as the town hall, then things get a little tricky. I'll talk about that in just a moment because that's a good defensive point um, is having the town hall in a strategic place. So anyway, it kind of comes through here inside are a bunch of giants. Like I said, giants are not the best choice usually. In this case, they will tank for the queen for a little while, but I think a lot of the bowlers had already died by the time the giants came out. So oftentimes the tanking is done by the, uh, the um, wall wrecker and then after it goes down, you want that DPS, whether it's Boulders or Valks coming out. I see. I think Valks are going to be good because they don't necessarily need a tank in front of them. And if you get them in the middle of the base, they can do a lot of work. But it depends on the attack. So anyway, the Laloon goes through. Check it out. A Freeze spell. Um, haven't seen that in a while, but only takes up one spell space now. So we might see some Freeze spells come back a little bit. I forget how it's used here. I think just on like the Wizard Tower or something. Um, but everything moving through, plenty of troops left up. There's the freeze, doesn't do a whole lot, but um, it could be uh, something that becomes popular as that second dark spell you bring in a lot of cases. But this base is crushed, 
Nice attack to Nike, and that'll pretty much wrap it up for this video, guys. Hope you found it helpful. One thing defensive-wise that I kind of hinted at earlier is if there's a certain side of your base where the kill squad is most likely going to be used, maybe your queen's there, it just is this, um, based on testing, it looks like that's where people like to send the kill squad from, put your town hall on that side. That way they can't use the siege machines to, uh, to get a lot of value, specifically the wall wrecker and the kill squad. Um, it'll just be dropped and target the town hall, which won't end up going through any walls. So that's something you might want to do um, if you know which side of the base the kill squad's most likely to come from because the town hall is now a very strategic building that you have to put in a good spot defensively to prevent people from just sending the siege machine in the base at the opposite side and busting up a bunch of walls as the kill squad moves through. So keep that in mind defensively. Thanks for watching. I'll make one of these for the battle blimp as well so you guys know how to use the air version of this. But let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you guys later. Bisect the Tron out.